There is power behind every story we carry within. Every tragedy, no, yes, laugh, victory. And every testimony that is incubated within our souls have power. The power to transform from tragedy to crown, from obstacle to opportunity, and all the moments in between make us wiser. Watch Candid Conversations with Teresa for impactful, unheard moments that will certainly spark your power and inner truth to shift, heal, and restore your life. It's time to get real, uncover, unlock, unpack, set free, and increase the dialogue to change a life. We all start somewhere and end in places of destiny. Get ready for the long-awaited Candid Conversations with Teresa. We are back. Candid Conversations with Charissa Season 5, the anniversary celebratory season. And I am excited. Your host, Charissa Monroe Wilborn, and I am so happy to bring to you a season where we have conversations on leadership. Leadership and change, leadership and me, leadership having no age limit. It is all about leadership. Why? Because it's all about you. I'm all about making sure that you are taking care of you in order for you to take care of others. Why? Because our purpose is so much bigger than us. In this season, we're going to have so many special guests, and I'm so excited to bring to you not only knowledge from myself and my experience, but knowledge from other great leaders so that we can help you change your life. Stay tuned for powerful episodes coming up right now. Oh, y'all need to stop. They're just crazy. I know, I know, I know. Look who is welcoming and giving candid conversations with you. I am here. I hope, yeah, you, I hope you know what you're asking for. Candid conversations with Colin and... I may, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm rethinking it now. Yes, yes, it's too late, it's too late. I'm not moving from this chair. We're gonna, there's we're going candid to do this. and then there is candid. Right. Yes, there's yes, candid yes, and yes. there's raunchy. Well, let's do it. No, let's, do, let's just do candid. Colin. Let's do candid. Colin it's Morgan. Good to see you. Welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. And can I first say, Let's big up Drs. Miles and Ruth and Drs. Peter and Pat. We can big them up <laughs> for having such amazing offspring. We and and quite and well. the fact that we're we're, we're here well. and we have we have nice we have good uh, fruitful siblings as well. So they did a good job. But really, you know, we want to give honor to our parents and the fact that we're even able to do this and and be this and be here. Indeed. But thank you again. For inviting me. And it's because of them, yes, because please. of their leadership. Thank you for saying yes. Um, it, isn't, it isn't always easy to say yes. I had to say yes seven years ago yes. um, to something that I never thought I would have to say yes to. And uh, here, here I am. Here, yeah, here you are. Here we are. And what a job you're doing. Good Thank job. you. Thank well. you. Season five. Amazing. It is season Amazing. five. It's been a year Amazing, yes. since the show has been existing. Yes. And um, it has grown. I've grown. And uh, I've ex it has expanded beyond what I even thought or imagined it would be. And so as I've been focusing on leadership this season, because I think the world is in a state where you have your seasoned leaders who are falling by the wayside very, very quickly because of the changes and the inability to adapt and be resilient. Right. And then you have the emerging leaders who need the help and support from us who are are still holding on and holding strong and I'm so glad you're here because I've been watching you over the last couple of years and I've watched you grow out of the box that and you know you and I can be put in a box almost organically because of the parents that we have and you know our growth can be in a box or in a cave as you talked about the other night when you and I were talking and it was a beautiful discussion we were having and I definitely want to share that. Um, but I've watched you just blossom and become and I said this can't be the same. Same guy. Crazy guy who I met at ORU. Yeah, we're not gonna go too far into that. He's in the streets that. and We're not gonna you know, go too far into that. Proper but, Jamaican, you know, y'all ain't got no... But it, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a part of the, the growth, right? It's a part of the maturity or, or the evolution of who we are. And that's some of what we're going to talk about. We had a real candid conversation the other day. Mm -hmm. And now we want to put it on, on here and share it with the audience. And mm -hmm. So let's do it. I'm ready. And I think I'm ready. You know, you said something, and I want to start with this line. You said 
the currency of leadership is people. Yes. Yeah, it, it is, it is, it's important first to understand when we, when we talk about the, the concept of leadership, that it's, it's really all about people, right? I call it peopleology and understanding that there is a law of attraction there. And in order for you to lead, you have to be, you have to have people that are actually following you. And so the currency, when we talk about what money, you know, obviously we're not talking about literal money, but the currency of a leader is people, who you, who you have, where's your line? You know, so we're looking back at you and saying, and I'm impressed when I, when I actually hear great concepts and ideas, but then I look behind to see who's following, you know, and I think there's power in that. And, and when, and as a leader, if you think you're leading, look behind you, because the, 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 the people really, t the truth is told in the people and in the line. So. And one of the things that I'm learning, like my personal journey right now, is even before we get to the currency of people as it pertains to leadership, there is, there is that aspect of the self-ish. And it's a term that I learned from you about a year ago, and I thought it was a perfect term. And we're not talking about selfishness. We're not talking about being all about me. No, we're talking about self-ish. Right. Like leadership starts with self-governance self-authority, self-management. Right. And all those terms before, and all those terms sound great, but really talking about we're, you know, a mirror, right? Well, so so what's the, we have to first look in the mirror before you go on the road, you know? And when, when I, I was brought up to think that way, you know? And the same thing applies. You, you're getting ready to people first and put people first as a leader, right? To be selfless and to give, right? Uh, but it's important to first be self-ish in other words, work on yourself first. It's about me first, first before I can people. And that is very important. And you're talking about self-governance and self-accountability and all of that. Are you looking in that mirror? Are you dealing with your, and I know in your course, um, <clears throat> we can did, right? right? So we can be open. No, we so when you're looking in the mirror and you're being selfish, mm -hmm. you're also dealing with your shh, your if you know what I mean. Right. And you gotta look at that and sometimes we don't wanna see our own No, we don't want because to. it don't look good. It smells good. It don't good. smell good. Right. And if you taste it, it don't taste good. No, I don't taste I mean good. I don't imagine it don't taste good. I've right. never tasted it. But you know. But sometimes you have to you have to address it. You have, you have to. to deal with it. Yes. It's not a matter of literally when, you know, a dog go out and they poop, you just pick it up and throw it away. No, that crap stays there right. for a while. Right. So if you, you don't deal so with you it. Seasoned and emerging leaders, are you are you are you ready? If you're really ready to lead, then you have to be able to look in that mirror, not just to glance at the mirror, but look at it long enough. Pull up the mirror and look at it long enough to look at the dots and the spots, the warts and the moles. And you know, some of them are beauty spots, but some of them are not. And we have to be able to deal with those things and address them. And some were created, some are naturally created, some are, some we've allowed to grow. Some have we happened actually, because of life. Exactly. Right. But you have to address them, you have to be more aware. And one of the things, that you and I talk about is the insecurities that leaders go through mm -hmm. or that leaders have. And I think leaders don't, I don't think no one likes to talk about their insecurities. No one likes to talk about their own crap because they don't smell good. Right. Very rarely is anybody going to smell like roses. But a, it just being aware of the insecurities that you have puts you so much further ahead of the game. Um, and you and I, you were, and I love the fact that you were so open and candid with me. So share with, share with, let's share with our audience and let's share with those watching the, like one insecurity that you deal with and how you've dealt with it until now. Yeah, well, I mean, it's easy to be candid with when you're talking to, you know, someone you know and trust. And so I will, I will also be candid with your audience and, and know and trust them because of you. But it's, it's simple. I'm, and, and, and the truth is the, the vulnerability is good. It's good to be able to establish, to, to use your pain also as a platform, you know? And, and we talk about the shh being still stink, right? Because it's still SH, right? Um, but once you have fertilized it and it now becomes manure, then you can use it, you know? And I would not suggest that you just, you just, you went through, you went through something painful and you just start to use it before it's first fertilized. You know, but listen, the insecurity is real. You know, I, I remember growing up and we're being real, right? So I remember growing up and, and I had a hard time from 10, 9, 10 years old. I realized at one, one point that I was kind of chubby. You know, I realized that I wasn't just a slim and trim and living in the gym, right? And so for me, and, and, and it was an awful, 
realization at school one day when we were, we were having PE class. I was 11 years old and the teacher put us in a, put us in a race, it's track, you know, I'm in Jamaica, so we're running track. And he put, he put the big guys, the fat guys in a race. And I was like, man, that's messed up. He's putting all the fat guys in a race. And then he called my name. And I was like, why is he calling my name? I'm 11 years old and this man, Coach Walters, wherever you are, put me in this fat man race and I was just like, okay, I guess I'm in the race. And everybody's laughing and I just had to make sure I won the race first before I dealt with the pain of it. But I realized from then that I was chubby and I've been dealing with this chubby and we all have a chubby, right? And we all have this thing. And the, the, the sooner you can come to terms with that and understand how to deal with it. Now I'm still a little bit plump. You've done well. I'm, I'm doing a little. I'm doing a little better. I'm, I'm yes. doing. I'm, I'm working on it. Thank you. Thank you, sis. But but at the end of the day, you know, there are some insecurities that I deal with. No, the important thing is to be able to come to terms with it and understand. Um, and even and it could be something that's not even just a physical something physical, but things that you're afraid of. You're you're not so sure about that cannot and should not prevent you from leading and being a leader. So I I cannot help but to be open and okay with my insecurities. And a lot of those insecurities we have, like you say, they're external, but a lot of insecurities that leaders deal with is very internal. Yes. The lies we tell ourselves, yes. the lies we accept from other people, yes. and I say accept because people can tell you a lie about you, but it doesn't become truth until you say, until you start to believe, until you said, okay, maybe I accept right. what they're saying. Um, also the internal fears that we allow to, and I'm not going to say that we allow to just remain, it's not a matter of eliminating the fear, but we allow those fears to drive, yeah. as opposed to coming to a position, and this is the fertilization, where you're okay with fear being present because you're doing big things, so fear is an indicator that, man, I'm doing something new, I'm doing something big but it doesn't drive. Right. You should sit in the back seat or get in the, drive, the passenger seat, right. but I'm gonna drive. And I like the way you put that, you know, because it's important to acknowledge it and to be aware of it. But like you said, don't let the fear rule you and, and, and actually freeze you. For me, I call it f being frozen. And, I, and you know, one of the things that you have to be aware of also is as a leader, we, we, we hear the criticism and that can affect us, but we also hear the applause. Mm. And that can also mm. negatively affect us because we were talking about this exactly. the other night. Exactly. What happens and when there's no applause? What happens? What do you do when exactly. there's no applause? The applause is not uh, is not 24/7. So you come back and you're sitting in your living room. I was telling you, I came back from doing this amazing event and we had the people and the this and the that and a good job and and then you come back and you're in your living room or you're in your study or in your bedroom and you're alone. Mm. And do you get frozen? And and I realized, candidly. I, I'm saying, I realize that the applause was a part of the thrust or the, the fire that lit, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to make sure you're not ruled by that. And just be aware of it. And then, and that's why I think we misconstrue the meaning of the term self-esteem and self-worth. Yeah. And we, it's, mind you, the word is self-worth and self-esteem, but we look for worth and esteem from everybody else, right. when it should start with us. I should be able to celebrate myself yes. if nobody else is clapping. I should be able to applaud myself for the purpose that I'm walking in, the accomplishment that I've, that I've done first. Yes. Give myself flowers and then every, everybody else does icing on the cake. But when that applause quiets down, we say to ourselves, man, like, like I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, one of my insecurities that I've dealt with, and I say this because I've currently dealt with it, is if I have a certain projection of a, a result that I want, an outcome that I want, that requires the participation of other people, and I don't get that, then there's a part of me that wonders what I have to offer. Is it worth it? Are people choosing me? Are people choosing what I have to offer? And then I had to realize that, you know what? I am chosen. I was chosen before anybody else. I am here because I was chosen. I was chosen, I was created because I was chosen for a purpose. And so, yes. So not only am I having to agree that I was chosen, I'm having to accept that you are chosen. And so I'm walking, when I say I'm walking in this, 
I accept that I am chosen, not just I'm chosen. I accept that I am chosen. I accept that I'm chosen. If nobody else chooses me, I'm already chosen. Yeah, but and, and sure, so it, it's so true, and there's a fear that can come with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And it can freeze you. And and you know, there's there's a man in the Bible, Paul. You know, he was, and you know, he froze. There are times when he froze because it's not. Sometimes it's not just people not showing up, but sometimes they're actually against you, or speaking against you. And Paul was in Corinth, and he was there for a few weeks, and he was he was sharing, you know, the gospel. You know, Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah, and the Jews were against him. So after a few weeks, he just said, you know what, I'm done. I'm done. And then he had a vision. God spoke to him and God said, do not be afraid. So we're talking about fear, right? He said, do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Then he said, do not be silent, for I am with you. And, and he said, no one is going to harm you because I have many people in the city. And that is very powerful. And, and, and it says quite a few things to me. I, I use, you know, do not be silent. Keep on speaking. It's, it's the same thing as Keep showing up, your presence versus your absence, you know, influence versus impotence. You know, are you actually going to continue? You know, when you have those moments where you're just like, wait, nobody didn't come or I didn't get the response that I wanted. God is saying, I, don't worry, nobody's gonna harm you. And I have people in the city, many people in the city. So he's actually telling me, he's warning me against or encouraging me not to be silent or to make sure that I am present, that I show up because he has many people in the city. It could mean that we're rolling deep, right? It also could mean that I have many people in the city and some people view that to mean uh, there are people who need you. There are people who are going to be... You ever thought about this, Sharissa? We're doing this and we're having a real candid kind of, kind of conversation. And the truth is, we had one the other night and we could do it for me and you, the benefit of us, but there are so many people and we do not know exponentially how many people are going to be affected by this candid that conversation. That is one conversation. And that is the power exactly. of it. Do not be afraid. But that insecurity, if I allow, if I allow that insecurity and yeah. that fear of they aren't choosing you, why aren't they choosing you? You're probably not doing something right. What you have to offer, they're not offering. Then I would do nothing. Right. I would decide I'm not going to do this anymore. If I, if I looked at if I use the numbers on YouTube to dictate how successful my show is going, I would have stopped a long time ago. But I just need to hear one person right. say, you saved my life. Or I'm going through a situation, it was so good to hear what you had to say, I'm so grateful. Or the guests you had on your show, oh my gosh, my husband is dealing with the same, like just hearing those was perfect enough. But just me knowing that this this, even this very platform, this show was birthed in my spirit. Who it's for is gonna be for. Who it's not for is not gonna be for. Everybody isn't for you. Everybody isn't gonna be for me. And I have to be okay with accepting that you're, so you are chosen, whether it looks like that or not. And not allow the fear of the lack of numbers, the lack of popularity, the lack of applause, the lack of claps, the lack of, of at a boy or at a girl not allow the lack of those to drive and say, you know what? No, you get to choose. And especially you and I, I mean, we walk in some shadows. We walk in, we walk behind some footsteps that have gone before us. And that, that exactly, people are expecting my brother and I to fill shoes. I will never be able to fill my dad's shoes. I'll be wasting time trying to fill his shoe, trying to fill my mother's shoe. Like I would literally be, be wasting my time. But when I'm trying to fill their shoe, then who's wearing mine? Who's walking in mine? Like I have a whole shoe that when I, exactly, and when I, when my feet grow, then my shoe grow, and my feet grow, my shoe grow. But if I'm too busy filling somebody else's shoe, I have to step out of my shoe to fill somebody else's shoe. That's so true. So I have to totally step out of my calling, step out of my chosenness, but I'm already chosen. These are the issues and insecurities that leaders go through that no one want to talk about. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to address those things. I think self ref, self reflection is good. You know, if the applause gets lower and and you say, well, I still, you know, if, if it's even just for one person, I'm glad I'm doing this. But you also can take a take the time out to, as we said, look in the mirror for a reason, right? And and to be able to ask ask yourself the question, you know, what happens? What does happen to a room when I enter it? 
how, how are people affected by me? How do I look? How do, there's a, I'm very practical, sure, so you know me, I'm all about what is the image? The, there's an image factor this, to this. Because, you know, if people are the currency, right? So, and we're not necessarily just judging by quantity, there's quality, of course, it's not just numbers, but there, there will be, there, there is something to be said about a line, and are people really listening, and what is it that I can do to make an adjustment? Because it cannot be just about being ready, but being prepared. As you talk about quality, like one of the, and you, and you talk about not quantity, one of the words I think about now that people are using is trolls. Right. You can have a bunch of trolls yes. that have your Instagram numbers up to the yin yang, yes. but they're not for you. Right. That's, that's not who you want. So I have no problem with the quantity of my followers. Like, you remember, you remember you and I were talking and we were talking about, you're a leader. When was the last time you looked behind you? Is anyone following you? I have no problem with my followers being this small. But the, the, what I want to say. Just the type of followers, the, 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 the personalities, the, the stature of who they are, the quality of that small quantity of those that actually want to grow, that want to heal, that want to learn, that want to be transformed, that want to have a breakthrough, that want to go the next level. That is a small quantity of people in the world. The entire world is not about personal development. Yeah. The entire world is not about getting closer to God. That road, we, the Bible talks about it, it's narrow. Why in the world would I want my followers to be wide if the, if, if, if the road to salvation and the road to Jesus is narrow? Yeah. Like I'm perfectly fine with the less numbers. But it took me a while to get there. Yeah. I'm saying this, but I wasn't always there. It took me a while to get to that place where I'm aware, because I'm not saying that that insecurity of, am I chosen, are they gonna choose me? It's gone, it's there, but I'm aware of it now. And I get to talk to it. I get to look at my in, in the mirror and talk to myself, talk to the ish that's there, and say, I have more power than you do. I have the authority, and that, that was given to me. Yeah. And that's powerful. I, I, I love that. I think, I think it's important for us to, as, a, as an emerging, you emerging leaders out there, and seasoned leaders, we, we're going to have to understand that in order to be a great leader, you have to learn and know how to follow first. And it's in that following period, which never really ends. Because the best leaders out there, if you really want a leader, look to see who they're following before you select them to lead you. But it's very, very important to understand that in that follow first period, that you, that you have to be able to look in that mirror. And, and what you have done, which I think is so, it, sh it shows maturity, you know, Sharissa, where you can actually create, what is your measuring stick? And your measuring stick is my line don't have to be 300,000. 300, 300, my, my measuring stick is the quality of the, the individuals and understanding that. And, and as an emerging leader and seasoned leader, make sure you understand what your expect, set your expectations, set your goals. Um, understand that in order to be an effective leader, you have to first learn how to follow and never stop following. Absolutely. And as we conclude, I want to dignify the word follow because some people don't like follow because they, they're thinking I can't be both. The other word for, the, for those of us who don't like that follow word, to follow is to serve. And I follow my dad, I follow my mom, I currently follow two of my coaches that I have, but in following them, I, I served them. I was at their feet. I was it may have been you and I who were talking and like the best way to learn, I think it was me and the best way to learn is to actually be in it. Yeah. Is to be, you want to learn somebody's company, then be in that company. Yeah. Be willing to serve them. Volunteer, uh, become an employee for a few, but you want to learn. You just want to glean whatever you can from them. And followship can look like just serving. And we know that leadership starts yes. with that of a, of a servant heart, yes, of, of service. So when you came to me, Colin, when you were doing your leadership program, and you wanted me to present, that was my opportunity to serve you. I didn't ask you for anything, you didn't give me anything, and it was amazing, and I, I'm sure I hit it out of the water. And it was great to do what I do best, encourage, impact, and influence people with my words. And I had the opportunity to serve you, and I learned so much, which is why I'm like, I gotta get Colin on the show. And we gotta talk about this now in a candid conversation platform, because I learned so much. 
that I wanted to be able to share this experience. So when you are following, you can actually look at it as actually serving. You're serving your gift because when you serve, like whatever blessing and anointing is on the person that you're serving, it becomes a part of you. It becomes a part of who you are. It's good. And, so, and let me just let me just add to the because you're right. You know the, the the word follow, and then some people you know understand what we're saying here is it's really a posture of a sponge versus a wall, right? And being able to absorb. And I'm telling you that if you're here and you you didn't like how it's sewn. Check yourself. Check yourself because you, you, you might not like it. I, I am telling you, like, I, I'm, a, I'm a leader. I lead. But I follow. And I know who I'm following. And we're talking, about, we're talking about serving, learning, being a sponge so you can absorb, being a student, but also accountability in different areas of your life, personally, professionally, socially, ministerially, for, for you leaders out there in ministry, we have to be able to look. And again, I'm looking to see who's following you, but also who you're following. And it's important. If you look around and you, or you look up and you can't see anybody, then you have to really, really inspect yourself. Look in the mirror again and think, what is my follow ability like? Inspect yourself. Inspect yourself. That. Inspect yourself. Inspect yourself. Inspect yourself. Colin, you know, you and I can go on and on we and on shut, and on. We can shut the Absolutely. Floor. Thank you so much for being here. But do you mind giving a little short word to our viewers? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, seasoned leaders, you're there, you're fine, you're leading, you have a line. You still have to understand what we're sharing now is about the ability to follow, the ability, the willingness to, to learn, right? To be coachable. Um, emerging leaders, it is very important. For both of us, seasoned and emerging, what happens to a room when you enter the room? Are you aware of how you look, how you sound, how you feel? Are you aware of what is it that I'm going to say? Once I have, I have now uh, attracted the, the, the law of attraction, I have now attracted the people and I have the line, what am I saying? What am I all about? What am I focused on? It is very important for you to really come to terms with that bef before you say you want to lead because your followers will see it. They will see it. And when you're real with yourself and you understand and know yourself, really come to terms with the mirror, it will help you as a leader. And it will also help you to follow effectively. So I, I'm, I am very attracted to, to a leader who can understand the vulnerability that comes with following. Absolutely. Thank you, Colin. Thank That's you. a wrap. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Amazing. Yeah, brother. If you are anything like me right now, you're probably sitting saying, man, how do I get there? How do I become this great leader that Sharissa and Colin and all of the guests on this show is talking about? And all we've been doing is talking to you about our life experiences. We've been talking to you about the journey. We've been talking to you about the growth that we've been going through. And we've been just giving you a spoonful of how you can change your life from just being a good leader to being an extraordinary leader. If you are ready to be fed with a bigger spoon, if you're ready to go deeper and dive deeper into how can I be a extraordinary leader, then I want to take that journey with you and I would love for you to take that journey with me. And I am developing a program just for you starting October so that you can actually dive deeper, so that you can get the how-tos, the action steps on how can I be an extraordinary leader while being an imperfect individual. And the name of the program is The Total Imperfect Leader, created just for you. Just a few years ago, I was tired of feeling burnt out. I was tired of not having anyone or being afraid to ask for help. I was so stressed out from poor leadership ruining my life until I realized I was one decision away from just being a regular good leader to being an extraordinary leader. And I started that journey a few years ago and now I'm standing here with you becoming and still operating as an extraordinary leader and I want you to be an extraordinary leader just like me. I'm going to take you on a short but powerful journey for seven weeks, seven modules, just for $177 for a value that's over $2,000. This perfect investment is just for you because I tried to figure out how can I make it so available and accessible to people to say, yes, I would like to be an extraordinary leader and not just settle for a regular 
good leader. We have so many good leaders around, but the world needs extraordinary leaders who are ready to develop themselves, who are really ready to impact, who are ready to influence and have a blast while doing it. I don't want you to just be working. I don't want you to just be putting in the hours and toiling and actually tired at the end of the day that you can't enjoy your life. Because guess what? Your girl, she's enjoying her life. And I want to show you how you get to find the perfect pace to make a change, to be influential and impactful and still enjoy your life. Visit the website at charissamunro.com forward slash leader. That's www.sharissamunro.com forward slash leader for more information and to sign up before registration close. L join this journey with me and let's walk down that road of becoming who? Extraordinary leaders. You have just watched another great, powerful, life-changing episode of Candid Conversations with Charissa. And I hope that you are ready to take the necessary actions to make your life so much better and so much different starting today. Don't wait to take the action that's needed to make yourself a much greater leader than you are right now for those that are following you, for those that you are leading. They are so waiting for you to be an extraordinary individual. Stay tuned and come back next week for another great and powerful episode with your host, Teresa Monroe Wilborn. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share, and don't forget to comment. I love reading your comments. I love hearing from you. I love when you join the conversation. See you soon.